In the past, I've talked about graphical Vim clients not really having much of a purpose. Take something like GVim, for example. Basically, all it is is a Vim buffer stuck in a graphical window, but you don't really get any advantages of there being a GUI. Sure, you might get things like ligature support, but most terminals do that anyway. All it's really doing is making the application heavier. But that doesn't mean that always has to be the case. So today we're looking at an application known as OnlyVim2, which basically tries to recreate the VS Code experience, along with trying to actually support VS Code plugins, making it a native application, and making Vim the base. Before I started using NeoVim as my editor, I was very into using VS Code and VS Code to do all of my editing, even things like modifying config files, I was doing that with VS Code. The problem I have with that application though, is that it's very, very slow. And that's partially because it's an Electron application, but usually I don't have that much of an issue. What I've noticed though, is if you load up say like a 10,000 line JSON file in VS Code, even on a fairly powerful system, the application may just slow down to a crawl, and the more plugins you have installed, the worse this is going to get. Now, unlike some of the VS Code plugins or some of the applications that have Vim key support, this is not running Vim emulation. Every single key combination you can do in native Vim is going to work here because it's running native Vim in the background. Basically, it's using a system known as libvim, which strips away the front end for Vim and allows you to actually use it as the back end for something like this. Previously, in the original version of OnlyVim, they were using NeoVim, but they discovered that the way NeoVim works wasn't exactly working for their project, so they swapped over back to BaseVim. One of the intended goals of this project is to make it so even if you don't have a in-depth knowledge of how Vim actually works, you can still get a productive use out of this application. Now, you still need to have a basic understanding of how Vim actually works to get anything done at all. So things like, hey, how do I get into insert mode? How do I get out of insert mode? How do I copy something? How do I paste something? How do I undo? How do I redo? Because those things aren't going to work the same way they work in something that isn't a modal editor or just doesn't have the sort of Vim key-like interaction like, say, VS Code. So I presume in the future, a lot of this basic functionality will be moved into context menus. So if you don't know the Vim keys to go and run it, you can still access those features. Now, being a graphical client, it's going to have the things you'd expect to be here. So things like, say, hey, uh, it has ligature support. Hey, you can go and select things with your mouse. Now, I did say you need to know how to get into insert mode because doing something like, say, a double click won't actually take you into it. I would like to see that. That would actually be pretty useful. But it also has a minimap off to the right-hand side here. Now, this minimap works slightly differently than the way that I'm used to. So, obviously, clicking is going to jump you directly to where you go and click. But usually, the minimap will go and center that line. In this case, it's going to move the box as close to that line as possible. So, if I go and click below the box, it's going to move the bottom of the box to be in line with that. I would like there to be an option so it will center it instead. But that's just a little pet peeve of mine. What sort of code editor would this be if it didn't have support for language servers? Now, obviously... Obviously, in Vim and NeoVim, you can add in support for those with things like, say, COC, but it's kind of a massive pain to configure, and sometimes the language servers don't work properly, and they're not updated, and you might need extra dependencies. It's just a massive pain to get things like that working. In OnlyVim 2, though, I've noticed it's pretty much just plug and play, and this is one of the big reasons why it supports VS Code plugins, because this makes it incredibly easy to do. So let's say I want to go and do some JavaScript like we're doing right now. The first thing we're going to need to do is make sure I actually have the JavaScript plugin actually installed. So it's not one of my installed plugins, but it is one of the bundled plugins. And basically now it just works. Once you do install a plugin, you may need to do a restart though. So let's say I want to go and use this function right here, which I've defined somewhere else in the file. So if I start going and typing out that name, it's going to show us the options we can have there. The one I want to use is this one. And if I go and type my bracket, then it will show me some extra documentation for that function as well. And if there are multiple implementations of the function, it'll show you the different implementations. Basically, it's working the same way this language server would work anywhere else. Now, if you do want to go and check the documentation for any of the elements at any point, all you need to do is go and hover over it with your mouse. So let's say I want to see this one. As we can see, that's a local variable with that name. Or we could go and click on something and press GH, and then it'll show you that straight away. As much as people are going to meme about VS Code, most of the code editors out there just use the VS Code language servers because most of them are really, really good. 
It might not be the case for some less popular languages, but for things like, say, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Rust, C++, any of the big languages, it works really, really well. Now, like with VS Code, you're going to have a file manager off to the left-hand side here. If you don't see it, make sure you go and click on the file icon, which should be the top icon in this list. Now, the file manager works basically as you'd expect it to. If you go and hover over file, it's going to show you where that file is actually located. You can't really do much else. You can't go and right click on any of the files and go and change their name or delete them. That is still very much a work in progress. But the exciting part of this file manager is this outline button down the bottom here. So this basically shows you every single function definition and variable definition in your current file. So if we go and jump to a different file, we'll notice that it all goes and changes. So this basically lets you go and jump to any of those elements. So let's say I want to go and jump down to where it says uh, new index, for example. And as we can see, it's jumped us directly to that one. This is just a nice extra way to move around the file. Now, one thing that is a little bit annoying is we can't actually go and resize this window. I presume that's just a bug that hasn't been fixed yet. We can resize the file manager window though, and that's pretty much the only thing we can actually resize. Maybe some of these things can be resized in the configuration, but the documentation for OnlyVM2 is also currently quite lacking, so maybe it can be done, but I wouldn't know. Like in VS Code, if a file isn't currently saved, it's going to show an icon in the top bar here. And then like in Vim, if you want to go and save that, you can go and run colon W or any of the other save commands. Now, the other option you have is going up to the file menu and clicking on the save button, which will actually show you the command you can run instead. Speaking about this file menu, if you have an unsaved change and you try to quit out of the application, it's not actually going to work because the command it's going to try and run is colon QA. So I think it's a little bit too attached to being a Vim application. So trying to run colon QA obviously isn't going to work because that's quit all and that's not quit all without saving the changes. You can still quit out of the application in this state by just doing your system-wide application quit and it will prompt you to save the changes. So I think this is how it's supposed to be working, but I don't have the quit button actually set up properly. And that's a good way to look at this generally. Because this is an alpha, there is a lot of things that are just not going to be perfectly polished. One of those things is the way the plugin menu works. So right now, if we go and search for something like, say, Rust, it's going to show us the plugin for that. The first one it's going to show us is Rustling. If we go and click on that, it will show us the page for it. This is the plugin we want. If we go and install it, that'll give us Rust support. But that's not exactly the point. I can't go and highlight the text inside of this box. So if I want to go, if I say have a bunch of text in here, I can't then go and select all of that text and go and delete it. I have to go and delete all of it by just holding down the backspace key. Now, I don't know why it's like that because clearly they have highlighting support working in the application, but just not inside of this one text box. As for the plugin support, while you can go and install literally any VS Code plugin you want, I cannot guarantee how well they're actually going to work. One that I noticed didn't actually function properly, and I think I know why, is one called auto close tag. Now, this is a very simple functionality where in HTML documents, when you write an opening tag, it'll automatically make the closing tag for you. Why VS Code and other editors don't support this out of the box, I know Sublime does, but why a lot of them don't is absolutely beyond me. This, I noticed, didn't work. I think the reason why is because it relies on some changes being made inside of the VS Code config file. And I'm guessing it just cannot find the location of the OnlyVim config and just use it to do the exact same thing. That might just be a bug in the way they've implemented that file. Any plugins that don't rely on any configuration should be pretty much fine though. While Vim language and Vim style configuration isn't the main goal of this application, it is a feature that is planned for the future. Currently, there is some experimental support available, but it's nowhere near stable and probably shouldn't be used for any sort of production work. Because having the ability to add Vim plugins into only Vim 2 would be incredibly useful. While VS Code plugins are great for doing things like having language server support, they don't address the specific difficulties that exist with doing Vim style editing. So having things like, say, do you want to have multi-cursor support and things like that? Yes, there are hacks you could do to make that work with the VS Code style plugins, but 
it's much better to do it directly in your editing mode. I don't know when this functionality is going to be available. On the schedule, it says it's going to be available for 0.6.0, .0, but I don't know how long that's going to take or how many updates are actually going to happen between now and then. While this is intended to be useful to people who aren't very hardcore into Vim, it is still intended to be used by Vim users. So having a graphical client kind of makes that a little bit weird, but you can get around that problem by just making a graphical client that has really good keyboard integration. So if I go and press Control G, it's going to bring up a thing like we have in something like, say, the Qt browser, and I can go and press, say, like, a, B, and that'll then go and click on that for me without having to go and move my mouse. While I've never really gotten used to this style of movement, I can definitely understand why there's a lot of people who definitely like it, and it does make it so you don't really need to ever touch your mouse in this application. Currently, there is support for tabs and splits, but it also works in a very Vim-like way. Vim-like to the point where it's actually just not productive to use. So, one of those things is we can't actually go and reorder our tabs by just dragging them around with our mouse, and we can't also make a split by dragging this tab and then dropping it over here, like you would be able to do in basically any graphical text editor. Now, unless the documentation is just very out of date, I don't think there's a way to actually move the tabs. I couldn't find any key bindings on it. I presume there's supposed to be one, but I couldn't find anything about it. And going up to the help menu and going to the documentation, loads up the exact same documentation that I was just looking at, which doesn't have any of the keys we need. But we can go and make some splits, and these work in the same way as Vanilla Vim, which means they have really bad key bindings. So pressing Control W followed by Control V will make a vertical split, and then Control W followed by Control S will make a horizontal split. I hate it being on those keys. I much prefer it to get rid of the Control W and just have the Control H and Control S. It's much, much quicker. You can navigate between the splits by using your mouse, but you can also go and navigate between them with the Vim way of Control W followed by Control and a Vim key direction. So say Control W, Control L is going to go right, Control W, Control J is going to go down, so on and so forth. Speaking of these splits, though, they work in the same way as VS Code, where all of them that have the same file open are going to be synced together. So if I go and delete all of these lines in here, it will go and delete them from all of the buffers I have open. And all of these different tabbing systems in here are independent, so if you want to go and open up a file, say, in this split here, you have to be selected on that split, and then it will go and open that up as a secondary tab. I don't know how I didn't mention this earlier, but there's also an integrated terminal. It doesn't work the same way as VS Code, where it's a pop-up from the bottom. What it actually does, if you go and run the terminal command, is it opens it up as a separate split, which I think makes more sense in, like, the Vim mindset. It's just a bit of a weird way of working with it, and this works the same way as any sort of editor with an integrated terminal. You can go and use this to build the file, run git commands, anything you want to do that you can do in a terminal. Speaking of git commands, though, there is an integrated source control. I have literally no idea how it works. I have tried to press stuff in here, right-click on stuff, work out how to commit stuff. I don't know if it currently functions, and there's not really any good documentation on it, so I'm guessing this is something that is planned for the future rather than is working currently. Now, obviously, this doesn't have feature parity with VS Code. A lot of basic things you'd expect to be there, like, especially in the file manager, are just straight up missing. But if you want really like a stripped down version of VS Code that works as a native application, this isn't terrible in its current state. I think it's actually pretty good. And with a bit more work, it can actually be a really, really amazing code editor. One thing I definitely have to say is while this is free for educational use and personal use and is an open source project, if you are going to be using it for commercial usage, it does require a licensing key. So if that's something you're not a big fan of, there's nothing you can really do to get around that. That's just the way the developers have decided to release their application. So I think OniVim 2 is really, really cool. There's so much stuff I just didn't get into today because there's a lot of features this application has. Things like, say, Emmet integration, which is really useful for making HTML documents. I think this is cool, and I'm going to be keeping an eye on it as it gets developed into the future. 
So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Michael, Logan, Andre, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Mitchell, Peter, Lee, Stephen, Tease, Theroux, Tony, Tushar, and all of my two dollars supporters. If you'd like to go and support work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe stuff, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. I've got my gaming channel, Brody Robertson Plays, available on YouTube and Twitch. And this channel is also available on Odyssey if you want to watch somewhere that isn't YouTube. So I think that's everything for me, and I'm out.